Rift Rivals has already opened with one upset. Now we get the chance to see if we will get another. Welcome back, everyone. Rift Rivals is coming at you live from the Dalian Sports Center Arena. Rez is already shaking his head no. Don't say that, Dom. You're already <laughs> shaking your head no? You're lying to the audience right now if you say that. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's already, we've already seen. Look, the precedent is there. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to hear it, Dom. Okay, let's get I'm into the matchup. I'm going to call them independent <laughs> data points. Okay, okay. Not correlated at all. No. Let's, let's get into those data points. Then. Invictus Gaming versus Machi for our next matchup. This is the team that did not go to MSI, that was carrying the hopes and dreams of the LPL, and then dropped them going into the playoffs, taking on Machi, a team who hasn't been seeing that much success in the LMS right now. I, I mean, very easily said. Like, that's the problem yeah. here is that, of course, coming into this one, fourth seed for Machi Esports. And then they made an adjustment. And this is something you have to sp sp speak about immediately is they made a jungle adjustment, putting in Crash. Yep. You know, yeah. he's been around Asia. He's going oh, to yeah. Longer, Definitely. <laughs> uh, coming into Vici uh, Gaming in LPL and then now in Machi to fix problems. And it hasn't been working out in the few weeks that they've had. Right now, without a victory, that's Machi's problem. And Crash mm -hmm. is a player that was long admired in Korea, specifically when he debuted on Longju Gaming. He was very much a super high action kind of solo queue jungler who clearly just completely played a solo queue style yes. and would go big or go home. That's what we saw from him. Flawless was a little bit similar, but obviously you guys have seen a different sign of Flawless yeah. over the years. But Crash made a big impression, started to fall away on Longju, no longer was involved in that org and gone all over the globe. We're not even including the time he spent at 907 Fenerbahce, which oh, yeah. is very memorable for their name. 100%. And, and that's my problem with the team, is that, or at least with Crash specifically, you talk about that aggressive style, that's what he showcased in the L L SPL, but then of course he's lost that way, he's been a lot slower in his gameplay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, that being said though, we're now ready to get into this game Ooh. one between uh, Machi versus Invictus Gaming. As we go though, let's hear Apex's thoughts on the matchup. I think Thank you very much, Apex. Great to hear from you and very good as far as the way that you think about your mid lane matchup because, yeah, Rookie is a powerhouse and it's going to be a tough one here for Marchi. I'm back with Clement. And Clement, do you think it's going to be the whitewash, the IG whitewash? Oh, man. I, I can't, I won't believe it if LPL actually goes down 0 to 2 to LMS. I don't think this is going to happen. This is the most one sided match we probably have at the entire of Rift Rivals. Machi coming in at eighth place in the LMS with only one win under their belt, while IG has only dropped their series to RNG. Well, Machi going to start things off very interestingly. They're going to take away the Draven from Jackie Love as well as his Lucian. Two champions that, yes, he's been playing a hell of a lot of, but targeting the 80 carry ball? Very interesting strategy here for Machi as the Nocturne to Lee are going to be very standard bands coming out from IG. And this signals that Machi does want to funnel more gold into duel. They want him to have a good laning phase and they're taking away very strong champions that can punish those late game scaling crit champions. Yeah. What is their last band going to be? It's going to be the Zoe band on the blue side. So not looking for that one as a first pick. Going to be mixing things up. And final band, band now for IG. Still lots of things available. What's standing out in your mind? Rakan certainly up there, Morgana as well. Lots of options, as Camille is gonna be the ban. They're very afraid of Crash picking up a good game. We have seen very uneven performances from this Korean jungle. A lot of the times he doesn't have the communication with the rest of his team to really pull off uh, good coordinated plays, but he can hard carry from uh, time to time. So taking away those options, all three junglers, uh, all three bands levied at Crash. Yep, and that's going to be the Sejuani locked in as well. So Machi not going to be going for any sort of funnel by the looks of things that should be heading towards the jungle unless they want to do some fancy support Sejuani shenanigans. And we didn't have time to touch on this, but the Shy is back. Yeah, the king he's of in. the top lane from the LPL. 20 solo kills by himself. So we have been waiting a very, very long time for his return after his injury. He's been known for that level two all in as Camille, his Jace, all very powerful champions. But instead, they're going to go for Ning for the early rotation against the Sejuani. Uh, yeah. Going to go for Gragas for Ning. Well, could be Gragas for a whole lot of people, actually, as Ash is being considered here as well. Jackie Love going towards a very traditional AD carry. In fact, probably the first one you're going to look at, but it's a lot of CC already locked in here for IG as Swain 
being considered. And we've got a burly few champions to start off Marchi's picks. This is what we were seeing a lot on 8-12, especially in the LCK. The first round picks of the Sejuani and the Swains gonna happen again. And Alistair's only gonna make that even worse. Oh better. yeah, they're setting up for a very strong bottom lane if they do decide to go for that. The combo with the never move and then the trap uh, and then the trample really kills ADCs quite easily. And this is a champion that we haven't seen Dreamer play this split, but he's yeah, but been you were known telling for me it. about it, right? Yeah. yeah, he was the best Alistar player for a very long time in the LMS, and I'm glad to see him going back to that. Well, IG are going to get that classic LPL bottom lane with the Tom Kench and the Ash. Very safe Ash. A lot of lane control. Really, really like it, but now into the ban phase, and we'll see exactly what's going to happen as they round out their compositions. Morgana standing out as a potential ban here. If Marchi wanted to run some shenanigans, put the Swain in the mid lane, you could have a Morgana else or something like that. On the bottom side of the map, Morgana is just very, very good at the moment, but it's going to be Aurelia taken away, focusing on the mid lane or the bottom lane, one of the lanes. From IG. Yeah, this is uh, quite peculiar because Apex is one of the few mid laners that doesn't play Zoe and doesn't play Aurelia either. So that's why you see them banning it out on the blue side. A lot of draft weaknesses with this player, but the good thing about him is that he plays a lot of unorthodox picks. You heard him talk about staying not dead against Rookie, <laughs> and he's actually one of the best Karthus players in Korean Challenger. And also, he was basically a Cassiopeia one trick, and that has not been banned, with the Yasuo being taken second here by IG. Jace is going to be the first ban on the side of Machi. The Shy, of course. Fantastic when it comes to any sort of dueling champion. The Jace, certainly one of them, is LeBlanc taken away from Rookie. My god, his one LeBlanc game that he had this season oh. was the most disgusting, as that's going to be Rise locked in. Could be flex, top or mid, of course. This could be a flex, but they are baiting Apex very hard to go into the Cassiopeia. Of course, the Cass does have a good matchup into the Rise in the mid lane. Victor would Taking be an interesting one. But this would be a fun one. I feel like Anivia would have been great against Marchi's relatively low range comp. However, not as many bruises on the side of IG, but still, if they want to play this really tight knit, let's just get scrappy, get in close type style, the Anivia are going to be fantastic. Yeah, I think the composition with Swain as the bot lane makes a lot of sense Maga. for Marchi. Ooh. Who cares about in. range? I don't care about <laughs> range. The problem with Marchi is they have been trying to play a protect the ADC style, but they've never played that way. They've always played an all-in, go-forward type of style. Last time at Rift Rivals, almost 50 kills against OMG. So I like them going back to their roots, embracing the brawl, but Aatrox! Oh, it's locked in as well! The Shy, he comes back into IG, and now we're gonna get newly re reworked Aatrox pre-hotfix. So this guy, not gonna be doing as much work, but uh... We'll see whether the Shy can make him look busted. Yeah, big question. Remember, as to this where dude this was Aatrox a ribbon one trick, all right? Yeah, yeah. And Aatrox is yeah, basically, he's a basically ribbon. worse ribbon. I mean, ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> but top lane Aatrox, we talked to the players a little bit, and people feel like it has a much weaker late game. You don't get the attack speed bonus anymore. And uh, it's more about the CC and how you position yourself to get those CCs on. So, very strong early skirmish champion. Yep, very excited to see what the Shy can do with the new and improved Aatrox or whether we're going to even understand enough about what he does <laughs> here on the Cast of Death since he hasn't been released for a very long time. His win rate, however, over at the Pacific Rift Rivals hasn't been too bad. I believe he went about 2-1 and one and did some decent work over there, but coaches are going to shake hands. Our second matchup here, it's going to be 4th place versus 4th. Once again, LPL versus LMS. Heading to the rift, the bruiser composition versus some IG disengaged standard style play. Yeah, I think for IG's composition, they're playing more towards the pick. The Ash, the global coming in from the Rise ultimate as well. Realm Warp onto a single target. If they can split Machiev up and avoid the 5v5, they have a much stronger composition. Yep, and if they can keep the Shy in a solo lane by himself, this Aatrox does a hell of a lot of work when it when it comes to one-on-one -on -one lane. This the new Aatrox is pretty busted when it comes to killing people. We'll see whether he can actually weave in that passive well enough to try and cut through his opponents. I'm just not sure about the pre-hotfix Aatrox though. He's missing a lot of things. Crucially, the two auto-attack resets he does have on that Umbral Dash. 
makes his trading power a lot weaker. And also his kit, his kit has been essentially retooled, a lot more damage, a lot more lifesteal handed to him. So it's a very weak version of a champion. Yeah. And uh, we'll see whether it works in the hands of the Shy. Guys, we are going to head to Summoner's Rift for game number two. Let's see whether the Aatrox is going to work. I do have a very fancy looking bird though. Oh yeah. Machi's composition, I absolutely love though. This is a type of composition that you would see, you know, a player like Kuro playing in the LCK. You know, like having the Anivia that he is very, very good at with all of these burly bruises running around the map means that you get so much value out of the ultimate. But is it going to be valuable into IG's composition? Which is a comp that, you know, you, you would have seen in seasons past with a very standard rise in the mid lane, Gragas in the jungle, standard bottom lane, and then some weirdo on the top side of the map. I think a lot of it does come down to how Ning plays the early phases of the game. If you look down all three lanes, none of these lanes actually stand out as being lane winners by themselves. It's going to have to come down to jungle pressure. And if you're picking a pick type of composition, you have to finish early. If you go to the late game, it's very hard to avoid going into the Baron 5v5. It's very hard to avoid going into an Elder Dragon 5v5. So they have to go fast. Well, the Shy just going to help out with Ning when he first starts clearing out the jungle. How frustrating is it when IG goes up against RNG? Is it really, really frustrating? RNG versus I IG? When you get Ming and Ning on the same <laughs> game. It's, uh, well, I speak the language, so it's not, 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 a, not a problem at all for me. It still <laughs> sounds the same no matter which language you speak. What are you talking about? You know there's actually no V in the Chinese language? Really? Yeah, so they call Vane Wayne. Really? Yeah, yeah. There's also no V in the Korean language either. They, it, it's a B instead. Yeah, it's like Baker, right? Yeah, makes Vivian a much cuter name. Oh. Vivian? Vivian. It's so cute. Sounds like Beaver, though. Yeah. The Shy, he's dancing around this top side of the map. Dark and Blade is what we're going to be see used. Oh. And against a Darius, remember, one of the best level one champions in the game. The Shy certainly making it look easy, having that level two first. Yeah, complete outplay right here. I actually would have expected 3Z to take the W on level one against uh, against an Aatrox because it's so hard to get the uh, the decimate onto someone that has three dashes, uh, not three dashes, but- Three can, bounces. Kind of, yeah, three bounces. <laughs> he can interrupt you from moving forward. And as we just saw, he did have the range advantage there. Yeah. We'll see whether it continues to be good for the Shy on the top side of the map. I hope we check it out a lot. As Duel, a player that I saw a lot uh, in seasons past, playing for Ever 8 winners over in the LCK. They didn't do very well. Yep, does not have a good reputation in the LCK. Apex, Ooh. not having a great reputation so far in Rift Rivals either, taking most of his health bar. But Ning, he's been real frustrating, making sure that Crash has the worst time possible. Crash just can't seem to find the right region. Not even Rift Rivals, but there's three of them here. Having an awful time in the jungle to start this off. Yep, that's just great play coming out from Rookie. Playing the lane very well, getting the lane advantage and pushing it with his jungle. This is what IG's composition does need to do early on. Uh, they do have a, a bit of a timer here. Comet Aatrox Ooh. as well, which is cute. I, I don't think 3Z knows how to play against the, uh, the Aatrox at all. Does anyone? The guy's been out for like only a few days. Yeah, because uh, he didn't have the timer on the Deathbringer stance, so he took a bunch of HP percent damage from uh, the Shy right there. Uh, does give you extra auto attack range to go through the Darius. Thankfully, he's not a, a shield champion. Of course, uh, Deathbringer's stance does go through shields as well. It's one of those fun type abilities. Now that I think of it, Aatrox is actually a very good counter into the Darius. You do put uh, a semi-grievous wound on him with the Death Deathbringer stance, and you do have a lot of mobility to get into the inner circle of Decimate. That's true. Especially if you're on the last rung of the Darkened Blade, of course, you might get yourself right into the Decimate yep. if, you're, uh, if you're on the first couple. We'll see how the Shy is going to play that one out. You do course, want this particular remember? skin, very confusing to look at as well, which may help. Yeah. You do want to remember the uh, the knockups for the uh, the darkened blade is tip tip center. Yeah. Shy looking for just it. Like does that. find one just there. Doesn't land the infernal chains. So not going to be able to pick up anything more. As uh, 3Z, he's got a big minion wave and a level advantage. So the shy probably not going to go too aggressive until level five has been hit. Needs dealt with all of these minions. But I want to see him do it. Had a lot of flashes. He's going to turn up. Plays, but... Does have himself. 
the ward down as well, and that's half the health bar of 3Z, and that may actually just be the problem here. He's going to be going back as uh, Ning. He's going to jump into that brush, and that's going to cause the cancel. I think he needs to flash And the now. Shy might actually get out. There's the flash body slam. He will need to flash out, but the Shy can flash after him. Gets in there. Can he land the chain is the question. One more hit. Doesn't have the flash, remember. Death Wants to get dance. underneath. There it is. Oh. And the Shy grabs it with the passive. Yeah, it does get the extra auto attack range onto him. And then finally with the percentage HP, last hit right there. I have to say, 3Z, he, he brought that upon himself. Like, backing in that situation where there's a high likelihood of a ward being in that tri brush, that's just asking for trouble. Disrespect. He, he thought he got around the corner for the tri brush. Yeah. The ward was in a better position for IG if he was going to back there. It's just not a standard spot. And he got punished for it. You're exactly right. It was not safe. Went for the greedy move and got punished for it. Dreamer going to be down there on his Alistair with this Swain. You can see IG having just the time of their lives, clearing out minions. No worries at all. Tom Kench and Ash, pretty disgusting combo. Ash's lane presence in the early game, pretty damn good against lower range champions. And you can see M17, they know exactly what's going on. They need to get out. Yep, getting zone out of the wave right there. Uh, Ash and Tom Kench, they both have long range poke against uh, a lot of the uh, double melees that we're seeing into the bot lane, does very well. Of course, the global pressure from them is the big thing that we're looking for. We have a player in the LPL, Shen Shen P. He hit 77% of his arrows, could predict flashes uh, yeah. across map, and that was just amazing to watch. This is why a lot of people are playing it in the LPL. Well, Infernal Chain's gonna land, gets the flick back, but no extra aggression from the Shy, who's decided to go very defensive on his way towards his Black Cleaver. Kindle Gem being picked up first. Yep, we do see the Black Cleaver rush being the... Uh, main itemization for the Aatrox early on. He is yep. more skill damage based than before, I would say. You uh, want as much CDR as you can possibly yeah. get. The old Aatrox still relied very heavily on auto attacks, but not really this one. No. Don't have that W toggle anymore. It's all very different. I only really just worked out how the Aatrox worked, and then he got changed. Sort of yeah. Apex gonna pick up his blue buff, head back to his mid lane. Some decent vision available for Invictus Gaming, but not too much vision on the map at all, to be perfectly honest. The, the Shy does get a couple of knockoffs. The World Ender does come in as Crash turns up to the lane, does have the ultimate available. So the Shy had to play very carefully and use the ultimate. World Ender does give you a bit of extra movement speed, and of course, if you fall down during the duration, uh, you do get Bloodwell to stand up once more. So good use to get out of a hairy situation. Yep. Keeps himself alive at least, but I don't know whether he necessarily needed to use the ultimate just there. Might mean it's a that very Z has a down. bit of opportunity. As yeah, no, it's already almost a quarter of the way through. On this patch at least, it's uh, I think it's 160. Like it's it's pretty insane. Well, he goes back home, grabs himself his phage. 59 CS to the 62. And in a laning phase is a melee against Darius. You have to feel that that is pretty good. We've got a lot of uh there's a lot of naysayers when it comes to the Aatrox. I was watching uh, the Pacific Rift Rivals, and uh, it was only Spawn. Only Spawn liked it. Nobody else did. Shout out to my boy back at home. I personally like him as well. Ooh, they're going in for the, uh, they're waiting. Yep, but uh, not enough. seems range. like Marchi just can't really catch up to the yep. Devour plus Spit Out. The question for IG is control. when can they actually leave lane? Because I'm seeing no mo motion whatsoever outside of Ning just having some ganks. Well, at the moment, Ning's just looking for more of those ganks as Crash is going to get himself out. Apprehend used onto the Shy here on the top side, but that's a really nice answer. Walks out. Infernal Chain's not going to do it. The Shy is looking for more, but that sort of demanded the disengage out of 3Z using those Infernal Chains, needing to exit it. This is such amazing footwork from the Shy. He started this trade very far behind. If he landed the chains right there, I think 3Z would have had to flash out. Uh, if you get hit by the chains, you do have 1.5 seconds to move out of the area. If you fail to do so, you will be pulled back. Which is why he had to waste a bunch of time. And there's the engage. We know that this is what this combo can do. You get the pullback, but it's on to Bowland this time. And Jackie Love able to offer a few auto attacks into duel of course does now have demonic ascension uh -oh. available uh, to him this could be really bad for ig because ning was actually spotted on his way here he was going from uh, the raptors into the bot lane so if machi are looking for a counter gank here they do have the opportunity Hawkshot is going to fly it's through pulled. though i don't know whether it's all the biggie's valen does have now 
Okay, oh, Jackie Lomo jumps back in. They're looking to try and bait this one as flat. Crash is still in there, duel. Demonic Ascension is going to explode, and that's going to be Ning falling down. Explosive cast, not enough to get the distance. And Marchi answer back. One to one now. Yep, but Rise is still coming in. Can Rookie actually make it into the okay, fight? Oh, comes down. good the arrow flat coming in forward. from Jackie Love. Rookie wants even more as Duel took a lot of two. damage, and Jackie Love grabs the kill in the end. Rookie does get the assist as he turns up, grabs something, and will head back to the mid lane. Yep, even though IG does equalize on the 1v1 kill, I have to give that over to Machi's side. They did see the gank incoming with the warding coming out from Crash right there. So able to get a lot of free farm onto Apex in the mid lane. Yeah. It's good work, and also Rookie now will be behind a little bit in experience as that whole wave did die to the turret. Breezy, oh, another wave just shoved right into him. Oh, you can't get too tilted. You know that he's tilted enough for the both of us. Let's have a look at this one again. There's a lot of baiting coming out from Ball and actually spits Jackie Love forward. I'm not sure that was a great idea. Like, Ning is baiting super hard for this, does get the double knockup, but Jackie Love doesn't have the HP to come back into the fight anymore. They were seen from miles away, and it's just uh, kind of sloppy on the ward uh, warding right oh, there. The flash was not great. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Yeah, the, the, the old straight line flash to flash out of the way of an Ash Arrow is never really a good idea. Yep, uh, I think it was good trajectory on Jackie Love as well. No, knew that Rookie was coming from yeah. the top if side. If he walks up, he gets room imprisoned. If he yeah. walks down, he just gets shot to death by Jackie Love. I do like the idea, so not too much to be said for Dreamer there. Good double Just whammy. unfortunate that you flash out of the way of a skill shot and get hit by the same skill shot. Breezy gonna get another visit in from Ning. Does have the explosive barrel, but doesn't land the slow. Ooh. Oh, Crash is gonna turn up as well. Rookie, no very, mana. very low, no mana. And the turret as well. Could just be taken down here with the extra pressure. Dreamer, he's gonna turn up, but in comes Bowland and Jackie Love just to try and protect first brick. Now, this is really not how you wanna leave lane as IG. If you're the pick composition, you want your jungler, Gragas, to snowball early and then have the Ash arrows for outside of lane, but. So far, this has not been working out for Invictus Gaming. I don't think Ning has done enough in terms of ganking. Well, the Shy still bouncing around here on this top side. Does have a lot of damage on this turret. So as he walks out of the Infernal Chain. This time, it's just... He looks like a breakdancer. Yeah. It's just, just a little bit over the top. It's like I'm playing NBA Jam again. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably didn't. But they had, like, ridiculous dunks in that game. Apprehend's gonna oh, come gonna in shy. onto the Shy as he flashes, flashes over the top. Does have the ultimate, no! Not gonna be able to use it in time and he just gets taken down under the turret. That was a weird flash. Yeah, I, I don't understand why you... Where You're the analyst, come on. You're with? supposed to understand everything. Uh, I think it? that was just a pure mistake. This is the Shy's first game back since playing in the summer uh, uh, spring yes. regular season. He missed the entirety of playoffs and unfortunately IG with a historic win rate fell to RNG in five games in the semifinals. So probably a bit of rust coming out from the shot. I, I don't think there's any real reason to explain that. <laughs> so it was an interesting decision, yep. but decided that he'd use his flash. That's what he did. It's going to be a decent teleport though. We'll be able to grab this cannon creep. And uh, that is certainly good news. Does a lot of damage to those backline creeps as well. So should have with the Darius walking to lane, at least this tower taking a lot of damage. So let's have a look at Do we really why have to see this he again? used the flash. So yeah. he flashed in trying to get the uh, the Q3 knockup. Well, we've oh, got even more of a fight here as Balan pops the Grey Health very early in this piece. And we he's going to get taken position. down very, very low. Balan is going to fall. And now, IG, in. this is going to be a tough one. In comes Rookie. Actually, out he goes as there's the Darius. Picks up the Ash on the back line. The Shy, he'd already used his teleport. He had to be top lane. Takes down first Brick. But they're going to lose the Dragon and they lose their AD carry and support. The entirety of the bot lane is destroyed in this final push, and they're going to take the mid tower as well. Uh, I, I fail to see how Invictus Gaming is going to find picks further down the line. It's going to be very, very difficult. Like, Machi is going to have to give them a lot of room to actually make these things happen. Well, we'll see whether they can. Of course, it's up to the execution of Machi, a team that haven't found a match victory so far in the LMS. At fourth yep. place as far as their standings last split was concerned, but this time around, it's very, very different. It's only the LPL, actually, that has a top four teams coming from their respective region, even the LCK with some ones from further down below. But let's have a look at this replay once again. 
make a bit of sense. Four v four start. Dreamer going in, taking up most of the damage. Bowland figures that he cannot actually deal with it, and Duel coming in from the behind to just basically force them into a funnel between Darius and the uh, the demonic assumption there. Yep. Ascension. And now Jackie Love looking to try and take down this bot out of turret. Not enough wave clear with the Force Lightning. And IG do it. They had the backup of Rookie there as well. He's been farming quietly. Didn't die in that last engagement. Just got himself out with his Realm Warp. He is the player that we often look to on IG to get things carrying forward. But now on a very scaling base champion. Has his Archangels already Ooh, built up? Both teams trying to catch each other. Yeah. I feel like Abyssal Mask might actually work on Rise this game. Because yeah, the lower should. range doesn't actually matter all that much when everyone on the other enemy team wants to be right in your face. Yeah. Not bad. They could do a lot of magic damage well. right there. Uh, that, that was actually very important for uh, Invictus Gaming taking that bot lane tower. That does mean the Ash Arrow is freed up to make picks across the map. And I'm very interested in seeing where the Shy is actually going to build because this game needs him to be a split pusher. He can't really just rely on his skills and whittle people away. He does need sustained damage at some point to continue the, the kind of uh, spreading out style that IG wants to play with the pick comp. Well, let's see exactly where this build does go. Certainly a lot of options at the moment, given the fact that, that pickaxe and the ruby crystal and the longsword could all turn into a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, it does look like a Sterics build so far. Yeah. Understandable. Probably wants to build into something like a GA after that, have the double free lives, which feels real good, especially when 3Z doesn't even have his Trinity Force just yet, and you're thinking about item number three after your Sterics, and you've already got your Black Cleaver. So certainly good news there, and he's really pulled ahead with the extra tower, and the fact that he managed to pick up all of those minions while the Darius was grabbing some kills in that last fight. Uh, 3Z going for a round trip right there. Actually fakes IG out. IG thought that 3Z would probably be heading bot lane, but instead, he goes top and uh, picks up the wave right there. Invictus Gaming, this is a move that we didn't see them pull out in spring, and it cost him a lot of games, but Jackie Love is a very aggressive laner. He typically does not leave his tower behind. So good read right there from Invictus Gaming, knowing that there was danger coming their way. Well, they're going to trade this turret. It's going to make it two for two. As the dust settles, it's a slight advantage by about 1,000 gold for IG, but that should extend with Shelly making her way towards the mid lane and opening up the map is what you were talking about with Ash Arrows, with Ning getting the right explosive casks and the Realm Warps and Abyssal Voyages that they can go on will mean that IG will have a much better time. 3Z slowed down underneath this turret as Shelly's trying to tank this one up as best she can and they do so just nicely. So successful Rift Herald as the whole outer ring of turrets has now been taken for IG. But this game is so much slower than we're expecting from IG versus Machi. Yeah, IG are the bloodiest team in the LPL so far. This is not what they usually do. They usually come out of laning phase very far ahead, sometimes 2,000, 3,000 gold ahead on average in the 20 minute mark. But uh, unfortunately in this game, they are a bit slower, but I like their position on the map right now. I don't think Machi should get any engages. They don't really have the map mobility, they don't really have the range to catch IG out. It's all in IG's court. Whatever they want to do on the map, they should be the ones taking the first step, and that means a lot better setup. Yeah, and also, you don't really want to run towards Marchi's composition no. either. I mean, there's Glacial Storm that can go down, you can get walled in, and then you're walled in with a big Swain who's going to throw crows at you, he's got a move called a Demonic Ascension, which is scary enough in name alone, and also does a hell of a lot of damage and keeps him relatively healthy at the same time. There's a lot that they need to respect on the side of Marchi, which means, I guess we just can't have a quick game out of IG, and they have to play methodically, they have to try and get towards the picks that you were talking about. Yep, and uh, good on Machi's part, realizing that the minion wave were not threatening their towers, so they're gonna be the ones grouping themselves up and trying to get IG into a 5v5 position. Victus Gaming reads this perfectly as well, says, no, take the tower, we don't care. Well, the thing is, Invictus Gaming aren't going to be able to defend that turret, meaning that Machi just grabbed that one for free. Glacial Storm just to cut IG off from one another, meaning that no engage is possible. Jackie Love has to sit on that arrow, wait for next time, and now it's going to be a little bit more dangerous to farm things out here on the top side. As you mentioned, Jackie Love's positioning as uh, okay. We'll see whether the Shy can actually get Those this one done. Me. Umbral Chain, sorry, Ooh. Infernal Chain's going to be flashed out of by 3Z. 
Yep, doesn't want to take the extra damage coming in from the uh, the potential ultimate <laughs> world ender there from the Shy. Damn, that was a sweet looking slam yeah. dunk at the end there. We needed 3Z to have the actual Dunk Master Darius skin for like the full basketball matchup on the top side of the map. Hey man, God King Darius is great. You have I Nant's know, best friend as well. I know, it's, it's really cool, but... Oh. Yeah, the Dunk's still probably better. Mm -hmm. Just new Darius. He just does some funny stuff. Yeah. And he has probably the silliest little dash in the game. Do you think Umbral Dash is like the cutest little nothing dash that we've got? It is. It's uh, I, a lot of times it's really awkward. Oh, Jackie Love okay. on his own. This is the classic positioning. The arrow flies out defensively as Dreamer finds the flash headbutt pole. See you later, Ash. You are well and truly dead. And Jules going to be out to grab the kill. Uh, okay, so that was uh, another inexplicable. But I feel Death. like we're learning about Jackie Love. This is what you yeah. warned us about, and then it happened. You you just got made to look like a genius. That's the thing about Jackie Love that he does make some uh, boneheaded positioning mistakes. We have seen this in pressure situations, and this tournament is the legacy of Jackie Love because people have already put him on the same pedestal as maybe Wei Xiao, you know, Name. He's gonna be in that line behind. Well, he's Uzi. playing like Name internationally right now. <laughs> I guess they go to that. Yeah, that one's working is okay. We've got the re-engage coming in from Machi, but that is just a party barrel. That cask, not fun at all from Ning. The realm more as Rookie people. still looking for it. They're using all of their engage options. Here comes the Shy. The Shy has got the world end activated. Lots of AoE shots to go forward. Look at the knockups. As the chains are in there, the Gragas grabs the first kill as 3Z may suffer the wrath of the Shy to continue this one on Bowland. He's got up. an ash in his tummy, wants to spit her out. Onto one of his, uh, onto one of the members of Marchi. And Colonel Chains walked out of there, but Crash is going to get taken down by Rookie. Well and truly in the top side of the map, and that's two picks for IG. But that's all they're going to get. And that was the Aatrox Whoa, coming unless off they the take flank. the Baron. Ooh, this is actually uh, pretty risky. There is no jungler coming in from Marchi. They won't take much damage here. There is reset potential for yeah, that Darius, no though. Yeah. They do have vision now available. A lot of damage, actually, going down onto this bar Baron. And be because the it. Aatrox has a lot of fun at this part of the game, they're going to be respected, and they'll take down the Baron. 22 and a half minutes into the game, and IG just turn it on. And that was just one big team fight. I don't think Machi knew how to handle the Aatrox situation. Well, I mean, the teleport from Freezy wasn't the best either. They were kind of hesitant and actually bringing that TP into the fray to cut off the advance from Invictus Gaming. So, you know, the Shy, great play there, driving his advantage forward. I just feel like they used all of their disengage nicely. It's yeah. just unfortunate that IG has about 17 different ways to re-engage the fight. They have Abyssal Voyage, they have Realm Warp, they've got Ning throwing out the cannon, the, the barrel when he finds it, as well as, you know, an arrow coming in from the Ash. They've got a lot of options. And then in the end, it was the Shy flashing in and getting a three-man knockup. But I have to say that should not have happened. Machi is the five-man composition going up against the pick, and they're just, they just weren't ready for it. Uh, that's what's... Pretty disappointing for that big team fight. I thought we were going to see some good play from 3Z, but no, Machi just backed out completely, and they got picked off one by one. Now Baron over to Invictus Gaming. Big problem for Machi is that we haven't seen them win a single team fight in the Elma so far. Yeah. They've been they've been pretty horrible in terms of their team fight shot calling. But their ability to create picks in the early game definitely looked okay. As we're going to have this the Shy's demonstration matter. on get how two. to knock a million oh. people up in the air at once. The flash into the Q3 to get the triple knockup. No response from Machi. 3Z coming into the fight late. That was a slam dunk. Nicely done by IG. Taking over the entire game, and I think they may be able to switch into a 1-3-1. One, one. Misses two, the upper head. One is now Rookie. He's trying to get himself out of here, but in comes the Abyssal Voyage. And 3Z, there's no way you can go. And Rookie, he wants more. Looking for Apex. Still has Flash. Stream is coming in. Has a decent disengage option in the headbutt. But the Flash forward from Rookie gets the Root Prison down. But it's not quite enough with four members of Marchi there. The Sharks cannot circle and grab the kill in the base of Marchi. And the Shy looking for some action as well. He has become the split pusher with the Sterix Gauge. We were questioning his build and how he would continue to apply pressure onto 3Z, but it just looks like the Shy is outplaying him at every single turn. You know, dodging the Decimates, getting the Deathbringer stance in as the last hits. It's just so beautiful to watch this man with his footwork. Yeah, weaving the passive really nicely as well, showing that the Aatrox may be not as weak as we initially thought. And that BF Sword should be a Guardian Angel 
when he decides to go back and buy it. At the moment, dealing with all the structures of the Marchi base. And now, all of a sudden, a 7,500 gold lead in favor of Invictus Gaming. The early game looked like Marchi were in control. Looked like they did have their moments. Certainly, the draft looked like a fun one, but not necessarily against what IG put together, which is just so standard. They've got so much range. They've got the Ash to engage from a long distance away where you're not going to be running towards the Anivia, towards the Swain, who really like getting very close to you to do their damage. Yep, and uh, Invictus Gaming with the GA onto Aatrox. I actually think they have a decent front line now as well. So they can put Aatrox in front and try to siege down the towers. We've been talking about in game one, if you have a three item ADC against a team that doesn't have one, your win rate's about 80%. So yeah. it does not look good for Machi at all. Well, let's have a look at this gank on the bottom side. It looked like it was Machi's gank, but it wasn't. Apprehend goes wide, and then Rookie says, guys, let's kill him. And they do. Yeah, and that's the great thing about the Abyssal Voyage with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow combo. You go to a place, you have an instant long cease, duration CC to lock anyone down. And it's just great to find Invictus Gaming playing with the 1-3-1 composition. Sure, it was a little late, but they still got there. Is it similar to, you know, the old Ash mid strategy of, like, you ult from Fountain and then teleport behind the enemy mid laner? I would say it's a bit safer, but the idea is similar. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jackie Love can do that one, too, because he's got teleport. We've come full circle, ladies and gentlemen. This is absolutely brilliant. Pretty much. This is the old Ash that I used to play, what, eight uh, years ago? <laughs> you always remember the yellow star Ash arrow. Yeah, across yeah. Cross yeah. map. Just beautiful. Well, Machi trying to deal with minion waves being shoved towards their inhibitor turrets. The 1-3-1 one, one here from IG is decent. I do like having a rise in a side lane, especially one that has an Abyssal Mask. This rookie's got his three items that he really wants. He's going to be soloing out this dragon very easily as well. So a lot of options here for IG, but probably want to utilize a Baron if they want to try and get the siege happening in earnest. Because yep. wave clear is something that Marshy do have. It's now they're closing in on the Shy. World Ender does come down. Fernal he's Chains did there. land, but didn't get the pullback as he's waiting for that Q to come back off. Does he's he get another behind. big knock up? It's stopped the off. ultimate has stopped. He goes down into his block oh, off Dreamer. Out of barrel. position is Jackie Love. So safe in the back line. Another Infernal Chain gets the pullback under, back under Crash. And he gets arrowed, but he flashes out of the way. But IG may have found their opening to take down this base. It just takes so long to kill the Shy. How do you deal with someone with he World and GA. GA? He's a pseudo frontline. Like, the Shy has solved all of IG's problems with this pick. He can split push and he can still play as a tank. Yep. Everything done. And IG are taking everything. They're even taking the bottom lane inhibitor turret as well as IG just collapsed on top of Marchi. Oh, this is brutal. The Glacial to watch. Storm in a decent position, but it's just not quite good enough. Double kill for Jackie Love as he makes himself known this game. Apex now has to try and run back to his fountain. And I think using a stopwatch in the middle of the enemy team is not going to keep you alive. And the egg is going to get split all over the map. And LPL is looking at their first win so far against the LMS. Apex, you know, keeping his promise, staying undead with the rebirth, but yep. not enough to save him and his team. The first Aatrox we're seeing coming out, absolutely smashing the matchup against Arius. Yep, he had an interesting flash underneath the turret, but after that, everything was good. And Invictus Gaming, they get the first score on the board for China in this year's Rift Rivals. Ladies Archie, and gentlemen. Their early game was good though. Yeah. They had a great early game. There was a lot of cold sweat going on for LPL fans yeah, all I, I around saw it. the world. I was looking over at you. I was like, is he the LMS? I think he needs to change I, the LMS man if yeah. Machi gonna win this one. I, I was turning blue because the lane yeah. kingdom was actually stopped by uh -huh. Machi. Machi is not a team that's known for their great strength early or late, but uh, Invictus Gaming. <laughs> They're not known for their great strength on Summer's Rift. <laughs> oh no. Well, not this split for sure. A lot of sighs of relief right there for Invictus Gaming. The Shy finally back, performing up to shape, has a new pick in his hand. And, you know, I still think the team coordination, the early game, there's a lot of problems still displayed by Invictus Gaming. They're not at their spring form. They're not at their final form, yep. but it was good enough. Yeah, certainly looked good to me. I like the way that they played slow and steady, understanding that they still needed to respect what Marchi put together. They had a lot of power in the early game. They had a lot of wave clear. There weren't a lot of places that you could safely attack Marchi. And Marchi showed them that they were going to be able to fight back if that was going to be the case. So IG just played some very standard League of Legends with a very weird top laner. 
and then everything was okay. Yeah, it's great to see these great players, Rookie and the Shy, being able to hold up the 1-3-1 one, one for Invictus Gaming, spreading the map out, and Balan picking his places to strike. This was a team win for Invictus Gaming, and they showcase a lot of coordination that was sometimes missing this split. Yeah, and that mid-game team fight was so decisive as well. They made sure they used everything that they possibly could to start the fight because they killed the Sejuani, and then went straight to the Baron, took that one down, and from there, that was all she wrote. It felt like IG knew that that was the opportunity they needed to take, and by God, they took it. Oh, look at that Aatrox damage. 18.6k, <laughs> he doesn't need any hot fixes. Recall the hot fixes. Yeah, bring it back, bring it back. The Shy is gonna be busted. Oh, uh, this is this is what a Riven main will do to you. To be honest, I don't think 3Z played as well as he could inside of the matchup itself. He left lane very early on and gave up the tower, did not find any picks for it. Yeah, so well, Machi I mean, do he have got a, a kill and assist back. in that team fight, which was sort of why he left the lane, but probably yep. didn't understand that the Shy was going to destroy that turret extremely fast and deny minion waves on the inner turret as a result. Honestly, just didn't understand the Aatrox pick, and I don't blame him because he hasn't been out very long, and you don't necessarily expect it when it's pre-hotfix. Yeah, 8.13 is a new world, baby. We thought we were going to go even later game. We're seeing LPL sticking to their guns, going for ADCs and new picks as well. Yep. Very excited to see what's going to happen. But guys, we are going to throw it back to the desk to see what they made of the new Aatrox on the top side. An excellent performance. The Shy in his first game back. Jackie Love, his first international performance. And Invictus Gaming, maybe not at full strength, but they don't quite need full strength, it looked like, for that game one. You said a lot of words without saying the word Aatrox, which was my <laughs> big takeaway there. Yeah, yeah. I think most of the game, our eyes were wide as to the possibilities of pre... Again, we've been informed this is before yeah, any yeah. hotfix. Yeah. There's been two since then. The amount of damage he's doing, particularly to minions, was insane. Oh, yeah. The pushing power here, it was even better than a Riven. Mm -hmm. The pushing power, the trading power, you could tell that 3Z immediately coming into the lane oh, level he was one. Like, oh, oh, like, yeah. What am I dealing with? <laughs> he has one level in this ability. Yeah, he still throwing stuff. 3Z was looking a little bit easy in that lane, but let's actually get into the draft before we get to that Aatrox, because there was a lot that went yeah. into that. There was the Tom Kench Ash from Invictus Gaming. They set up with the pick composition. They looked like they were just playing the standard lane kingdom, and then, of course, the Aatrox. But it was also standard lane kingdom from Invictus Gaming, and then a very LCKS draft, a lot of flex yeah. picks, a lot of mages, a very good fighting draft, and the fighting draft actually was able to work very early. We saw some mistakes from Jackie Love, but there were fights early where you thought, actually, this could be the monumental upset of Machi taking it down. Oh, yeah. And then kind of Aatrox <laughs> ended that very quickly. Yes. Yeah, and I would like to go towards Machi's, like, two picks. Swain, and, Swain Alistair, I'm going to add a third one, the Anivia. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Because I love the Anivia just because the laning phase focus up against Rise. Massive range. Old lane. Yeah, Classic exactly. lane. Really good for Anivia. And also, you can see how she was utilizing the walls in the team fights, making it so difficult for Invictus Gaming to follow through. And then, of course, Alistar and Swain for the pick potential. They were able to catch out Ash earlier on. So it was really smart, really strong control if they were able to play it out well. So let's actually talk a little bit about that mid game that yep. you just mentioned, Papa, because, like you said, there was a moment in the game where you looked at me and said, Machi might actually upset IG here. And I think it was that fight at Dragon. And it's one of those things where what was explored about the draft, what I knew about what could happen out of these Swain teamfight comps mm -hmm. was pretty straightforward. We're going to see the replay starting here. If you can get backline access on Ash at one item, she's not going to be able to kill people. There's so many unkillable members. Alistair is ulted. Duel gets that backline access. Exhaust Ignite from these mage and tank support bot lanes is so powerful. You can see how much space was controlled in this replay mm -hmm. by the draft here. I mean, if you keep doing that and you keep the game early, with the known variables, I was like, wow, okay, I like the draft, it's yes. Machi, wasn't expecting it, they're one and six, but Invictus Gaming, what's happening? Laning phase wasn't outstanding outside of the top and outside the one dynamic variable that is this new Aatrox. Oh, yeah. yeah, so even like before I touch on the new Aatrox, it's the Ash, Tom Kench, and the Rise to be able to pick the fights, and if they get caught, a few times ended up happening towards Ash, they can always collapse, always yep. collapse, and if mm -hmm. they ended up getting Baron in later on, they can always, if they have two waves adjacent to each other, they can always end up drop shipping it to the other one. So I really love that yeah. aspect. Now we can talk about yeah, the Aatrox. Let's about go yeah. for it. World Ender makes what an appearance. What the hell? Okay. <laughs> so, of course, the laning phase strength that we were able to see on that one, the sticking yeah. power, utilizing ulti. So if you're just right in the middle, of it, do you even focus down the Aatrox because he has Bloodwell ready and willing to go? Mm -hmm. They didn't have the response to it, and it feels like the team fights, even though 
Aatrox loses the sticking power of Dark Flight and the slow of his E, you don't want to fight into him. He no. is such a force to go into. He still made up for the lack of that Dark oh, Flight yeah. by making his own Dark Flight. The third hit of the Darkened Blade into Flash onto three what people. A replay. Oh, yeah, getting the one man knock up, but the three man slow. So the rest of Invictus Gaming could chase up, of course. I that mean, was the by highlight the reels we have to start showing them because they were exactly. so outstanding here from the Aatrox. Mm. Ability to go in and engage. We're at the it, point now was, where yeah. I see the game pre hotfix and maybe my uh, <laughs> LCK caster name for the World Ender might be the Game Ender because he <laughs> pops it and it's like, oh boy, oh, here yeah. we go. The third E with the flash. This is basically something out of Freak's Champion Spotlight, but it <laughs> happens because clearly we see one team ready for this pick, understand mm -hmm. the engage range, and even in the lane you could tell range understanding of 3Z was off. In yeah. the team fight, their understanding was off and the game ender was real. And we do have to talk about Invictus Gaming trusting the Shy on a new champion on his first game back to chase them down from behind Red I have Bar. a question. Which yes. part of that is the most surprising? Because I've heard the LPL cuss, I tune in for IG, it's yeah. on often when I'm on a break, and I keep hearing about the Shy, he's not there. Yeah. Finally he's there, so is it the biggest surprise, the Aatrox, or the fact that the Shy actually got a look in? I would say the Shy coming, it's a great opportunity, of course, not really having the impact of the split itself. Sure, no so world's implication. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now they really get to see if he's working for him, and immediately, yes, laning phase is <laughs> phenomenal. So you can make a point that it's just the Aatrox pick that he's coming in with, but the Shy has always been a player that picks up the Jace immediately when in a tank meta, or yep. picks up like just random carry options and says, you play around me. And a lot of the things about Invictus Gaming is that they're known as the Lane Kingdom team. Rookie, Jackie Love having so much strength within the laning phase, now having that one extra lane on the top side of the map in their favor, it makes a lot of teams Fourth seed teams, yeah, trembling. <laughs> and we do have to talk about the end of the yeah. game there because it was the three lane pressure, just picking and choosing which lane to pressure from. And of course, it was the Aatrox getting basically collapsed on by five people. Who's collapsing on who was the question <laughs> yeah, exactly. I very clearly started to wonder because he pops the ultimate, he had the Guardian Angel, he has a lot of items. Again, we have to mention this is post a winning lane phase, no repeated ganks. Yeah, He's yeah. definitely a strong Aatrox at this point. Well, we saw the post-game damage numbers, and you just see fights like this where, you know, he's creating a zone. He's basically Swain Alistair all by himself with how much zones he was creating against Machu. Yeah, yeah and essentially what we see here is if, if uh, Aatrox is ahead of the pace, especially if he pops ulti, it reminds you of a Swain. We already saw in the Swain yep. in the game, but you don't want to fight because essentially it's a long time in which you're battling, losing HP on that one, mm -hmm. and the rest of the team is collapsing. So it's going to be fun. I, I, I definitely expect... Uh, expect to see a lot more Aatrox yep. going forward <laughs> with the laning phase that we see here. I wonder if, like, how you actually go into that lane. I mean, just let's talk about the simple fact. Again, the Darius seem unpracticed against Aatrox, but Darius is one of the strongest mm -hmm. laners. So I want to see that lane rolled back maybe with someone more experienced. Yes. And then we've got to start understanding what's good into Aatrox because Aatrox did really well this game. Yeah, and I think uh, two picks coming to mind. Jace, Kennen, I want to see the range, range going into that one. That, that's yeah. an easy counter. All right, well, we'll see if that's going to be some answers out of this Rift Rivals. That said, we're going to go and take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Rift Rivals action.